so excited to be here. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. I am so excited for you uh, to be here. I'm really, really excited for us to have this conversation. I'm really thrilled too. When we were just emailing back and forth, I got, I got really excited because I feel like the work you do around mindset and changing is similar in a way to the work I do with social media. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's just kind of a shift that you make. Yeah. Which makes it sound so easy, by the way. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not. not. And then why we need, like, I need your services so badly <laughs> because I just don't get, I know I have to do social media and, and sometimes I like doing it, but, but the most, most of the time I actually don't love doing it. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's the big, well, the big, not so big secret that I, I kind of like came out to the world and was like, well, I don't like social media and I'm a social media manager. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I've been in business for uh, almost eight years now, uh, for seven plus years. And I love providing value for my clients. I love it so much. But when it comes to turning the, the social media lens on myself, I get all sorts of icky feelings. So, so you get it. You get our pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, so because I'm, I'm launching this course, I was like, okay, literally everyone looks at my social media and they're like, you're a social media manager. And I'm like, yeah. And people do really well. <laughs> like I'm really good at it, <laughs> but it's sad. Go ahead. Go look at Instagram at Lauren dot lit. Uh, it's not good. It's not good guys. But, um, I challenged myself in August to do what I'm teaching people in the course, to, to do it for myself, because I, I do have all that stuff. And it was really funny because all of these things came up for me, all of this like angst and overwhelm. And then, you know, Instagram came out with reels and I was like, I just don't even know how to do that. And that seems really overwhelming. And I, I'm frustrated and I'm paralyzed. Um, and so I did, I'm going to just share the numbers because it's data, not drama, right? Yeah. I did four posts on the Facebook page. I did, I ended up, I think, doing six posts, pre, three planned, pre-planned posts on my Instagram page, and then three that were kind of in the moment. Um, I did one Facebook Live. I did, I did three IG Lives because I was on a five-week RV trip, and I was just in really beautiful places. Which um, I'm going to talk to you about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I did, um, I had, I spent one hour pre-planning content for Twitter. That's it. That's all I did. And so I was feeling really like I'd let people down because I kind of opened up like, here's my process and here's what I'm doing and here's the daily fit and all the things. And then I looked at the numbers mm -hmm. and I actually uh, signed three new clients last month. Wow. Um, yeah. I, um, what was the other thing? Oh, I added my, my newsletter list grew by 24%, which, wow. you know, it's a small newsletter list, but that's big. You know, that's if I were to add 12 new people every month, that's something. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had my highest converting Instagram post ever, which was five people who clicked on the link and signed up for my webinar. Hmm. That's success. That is total success. I mean, so do you, do you attribute it to actual consistency? What is, what is some of the, yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. Like I know social media inside and out. So I know the rules and I know when I can break them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to empower people with mm -hmm. is if you understand how to play the game, I look at each social media platform, like a game, Facebook is different than Instagram is different than Twitter is way different than LinkedIn different than Pinterest, all the things, right? Mm -hmm. But if you know the rules, you know what you can do, what feels good to you and what you can be like, I just, I'm overwhelmed and I don't want to do that today. I'm not going to post an Instagram story three times a day at the peak times, you know, with the right stickers and figure out a reel and do all the things like that's fine. But consistency, they, there's a saying in social media, content is king, but consistency is queen. And when you have the two together, that's the perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your content is not going to be great when you start out, but that's okay. We all start somewhere. It will get better. If you just commit to doing one post a week on anything, like one, if, if you're like Twitter is it, 
if I did just going to tweet once a day or once a week, you know, like you will get better at it, but the consistency is what's going to drive it. And also the other part of the key is really, uh, and this is the part that I think really helps when you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I just feel gross posting on social media. <laughs> it's changing it to, it's not about you. It's about who are you there to help? And so if you can really clarify your audience, that's the thing that makes it really easy to share. So a lot of my clients have said this to me, right? Like they're, they're all creative types and, you know, right. whether they're writers or actors or musicians or TV producers or writers, right? They say to me, well, why can't my work speak for itself? Like, why do I need to be on social media to kind of like tell people what I'm doing or how I'm doing things? Like I, you know, they see some of their colleagues actually having great results, like getting booked for speaking events or doing other things and, mm -hmm. and having, or selling more books or whatever, right? Because of it. However, they just feel like, I just want my work to speak for itself. So what do you say to somebody who thinks like that? I feel you. <laughs> and here's the thing is, do you have to be on social media? No. But if you are not on social media, you are making the choice to turn down free advertising, which I think is very silly. And when you know the rules again, and you know how to post, the idea of like now in business, right? Most of us wouldn't dream of not having a website. That was not, that was not the way it was, you know? I don't know, even five years ago, 10 years ago, like, but now if you're in business, you have a website. That's just period, end of story. If you want people to connect, and this goes into, I go a lot in, into my class in this, but advertising has changed from a push marketing to a pull marketing because we're all so uh, inundated every day with all of these things, which is again, probably why people don't like social media. Um, but we have to give value to people so that they want to go, oh, I would like some more of that. I'm going to kind of like come into that person's world, which is why, again, I focus on building community. Who is your audience? How can you provide value to them? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're a creative, if you're someone who was, I'm a creative, I'm an actress, right? If you were, if you were put in this world to share your art and to share your story because you need to uplift humanity. It, it's, it's an absolute crime to keep people who need to hear your message from hearing your message. Mm -hmm. So, and especially now, like we need artists in a big way. Yes, we definitely do. What do you say to people who are thinking, well, social media, you know, it's not the real me, right? Like, how do I, how do I do it in a way that comes across like the most authentically, right, to myself? Yes, absolutely. I love this. So one of uh, my friends who's taken like my, my little course, you know, she works, she's an artist and she also works for kind of a government agency. And she was like, I don't want to share like certain things because that feels really awkward. And so we figured out a way for her to authentically share her version of the world without her selfieing all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way that you can share, you know, what you're seeing, what you're viewing, what is authentic to you without going by what you see like an influencer with 30,000 followers, you know, sharing because that's them. That's not you. And if you try and be like, well, okay, I'm going to stand in front of a mural and, you know, make a cute pose and it just feels weird to you, uh -huh. don't do it. Yeah. But maybe your way of sharing yourself is, um, you know, for like a book and a cup of tea. You know, if you're like, this is what I'm reading. What are you reading right now? Like it, it's all about the value you can, again, provide your community with value. And again, when you turn the lens off yourself and you turn it on to that, when you focus on that, it's so much easier to be authentically yourself, like a lot. Yeah. So and what about for like those of us who didn't really grow up with social media, you know, like Gen Zers are very much like 
private. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think anybody cares if, you know, I'm, ha I'm reading a book and like having <laughs> tea, right? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? How do you respond to somebody who's thinking that? Well, A, I mean, nobody does care. <laughs> so <laughs> let's relieve the pressure, okay? Nobody gives a poop. Um, but the, the thing is, if nobody cares about what book you're reading or the, the example I always use is like, oh, I got this at Starbucks this morning. Like nobody cares what I got at Starbucks, but people very much do care about my rant about people who are trying to sell people followers on social media. Right? Like when I saw that come into my little DMS and you know, you can buy 30,000 and I went on a rant People were like, yes, absolutely. And they're engaging because that's something, that's what I'm bringing to the world and what my community wants to hear. So again, if you know your community, if you are, I don't know, well, for instance, you, right? People may not care that you're reading a book of poetry and it's beautiful to you in the morning, but they may care that, you know, you added a new amazing spreadsheet that's super cool and it's going to make their money matters easier. You know, like it's, what is it that is content that is going to help and benefit the people that you're here to help and benefit? Mm -hmm. And you're, I love the title of your program, how to social happy, because like for most of us, it doesn't feel like it's a happy thing to do, right? It's like, it's like, okay, happiness is over there, right? Happiness is me doing X. Not, I don't know anybody who's like, happiness is me being on social media and doing those It's all day on social media, all IG live all the time. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, I think social happy kind of came, one, you know, you can tell I'm, a pretty positive person but I it's not that I'm like oh boy oh boy do I get a thrill out of sitting down and doing my own social media but the happiness I get out of helping people the happiness that I feel when my clients share things like uh, I you know one of my my clients that I haven't had that long but for several years his sales last month were up 38 mm. percent this is COVID, okay? This is like, and, and the fact that he's built enough of a community and that he is aware enough of their needs and, and there and they're supporting him because they know that it's COVID, you know? Like, that's joy to me. And so the social happy isn't necessarily like, we're gonna have the best darn time posting. It's the joy that you're going to have that your message, your art, your creativity, the way you help the world you're going to be able to do more of it. Just like with the more money you have, the more you can do, you know, if you have a social media feed that's connecting with the people that you're supposed to connect with, you're going to be helping more people. I love that so much. And so because I am a money coach, let's talk about the money part. I mean, it's, it's yeah, really interesting, right? To hear you say that, like, okay, um, your client's sales went up, you know, by this much. And then you got three clients last month, just when you were more consistent. Um, where is that connection? Because like, so, sometimes I feel like with social media, I'm just sort of spinning my wheels, right? Like I'm putting stuff out there every week mm -hmm. or whatever, and I don't know if it really quite converts or how does it convert or how does it make money? How does it help you make money? Ooh, the analytics. <laughs> now, this is where I truly geek out, actually. And this is, I think, why I ended up getting into social media the way I did, because the numbers and when you're in the back end of your social media platforms, which everybody can be in, you don't have to be a genius or, you know, have some kind of very expensive software. It's right there in your phone, um, right there on the platforms. When you're able to look at what's working, and see what people are engaging with. So last month, um, towards the end of the month, I was like, wow, you know, I'm posting and I'm getting in a role. And so I had posted one thing about my um, five minutes to social happy free webinar that's coming up. And then I posted another one, which was like this message that was like, this is 
on, on the RV trip, side note, uh, the first night, the second night we were out, we were sitting there and social distancing. There was another couple staying in the same campground. And so we were like just chatting, watching the sunset, watching the stars come out. It was really great. And the wife, they were probably like in their 60s or maybe 70s. They weren't super old at all. But she told me, she said, she turns to me and she goes, it's called living wide. And I was like, you know what? And so she, she explained to me that it's about making the most of our days and living in a way that is doing all the things we want. You know, my husband and I have always wanted to RV. We've always wanted to travel. We've always wanted to have our own businesses and dogs and, you know, do all these things. Anyway, I created this very long post about that moment that meant a lot to me. And it got like such low engagement. And when I looked at the numbers in the back end, it got low engagement. It got low, you know, it, not only was it low engagement, it didn't even show up in certain people's feeds. And I was like, well, why would that be? And then I was like, oh yeah, the people I'm talking to don't like social media. They don't want to sit here and read a long post. The post that did the best, that got the most click-throughs, it was short, it was to the point, it told them what they wanted and then they were out. Uh. Analytics, back end, figuring out what actually works for you. Um, and also, you know, when you know the rules of the game, again, you're going to know the things that your audience wants to see and doesn't want to see. Mm. That was a very long rambling, and I hope I got to the point. You did. You definitely did. I mean, well, does, can it take only five minutes? I mean, you're, you're about to, you know, do this class, you know, this master class on, you know, five minutes to social happy, like, can it really just take five minutes? Because for me, sometimes it takes me like an hour to craft something. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. So here's the key. So it's two things, right? One, you got a batch, meaning, and I know people might get heebie-jeebies when you say that because the idea of sitting down for an hour and working on your social content but if you don't sit down, like I said, I spent one hour creating content for a whole month of Twitter posts, right? And yes, I know I'm a social media maven and I do this all the time. And yes, it might take you longer. But so I sit down, I block out, you know, my little two hours and I create the content. Done. I'm done creating content. Now it's about that five minutes a day. And that's five minutes a day for each platform, right? So if you're only doing Instagram, yeah, absolutely. You, you can create the engagement you want in five minutes a day because I call it the daily fit, which started when I was only doing Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for people. So FIT. Um, but it's about getting in, engaging with the audience, responding, sharing, reaching new people, and getting out. You should not be spending all day, every day on your social media. You are too busy. There are too many things in the world just sitting there and scrolling. And by the way, the other reason why I created this is the people who created social media are evil and they know how our brains work and they know how the dopamine drips down. And so they've created it all bells and whistles that you'll just be stuck there for hours. So when you have a plan, you know that you're like, dump, dump, dump. I'm not going to get, you know, sidetracked. I'm doing the things I need to do and I'm out and I'm on with my day. Mm. Oh and my I'm joining the, the class because Yay! I, yeah, I well, I'm joining your class too. So <laughs> you definitely need to know how to do this in five minutes. daily. Like it's okay. So we talked about consistency earlier and how important that is, but it was when I realized that this daily fit thing, when I figured that piece out, that's when engagement really started to go through the roof for my clients and where they were seeing results. None of my clients have, crazy huge followings and communities because that's not what it's about they have people who absolutely love what they're doing their product their events and they will sign up and they will be there for them okay. i don't care i don't care about 10 million followers i don't want 10 million followers right yeah yeah you want really engaged and people who want to like hang on your words and know what you're doing and, and, um, and buy from you too. Right. Right. Well, because they know they're your people, Yes. right? You, you only need to find your people. And some of us may have larger groups of people and other, because sometimes you're talking about something that may 
affect more people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm talking about people who don't like social media, who are running businesses, which I think is more of us than, you know, we care to admit, but um, it, it's about really figuring out again, who are you here to help? Yeah, so. So good. All right, so now I want to hear all about um, this road trip. Oh, but before we do that, how do people find your class? Your, your webinar's coming up. When is it? Yeah, all of that. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm offering three webinars, September 8th, 10th, and 12th. Um, they're at September 8th, 10 a.m., September 12th, 6 p.m. Eastern. These are all Eastern times, by the way. September 12th, 3 p.m. Eastern, so you got some variety. Uh, and I'll provide you with the link. Uh, it's build a big community and it's and we're going to go over in in my webinar there's three things we're going over we're going over um one part of the daily fit which is the part that i think is is going to give you the most impact without knowing the whole thing uh we go over the importance of your bio and how writing your bio in a specific way will constantly bring people to your pages uh, and then we go over, ooh, ooh, your perfect client. So you'll learn about uh, my, my, my client who he told me he made 38% more last month than he did from the previous year, uh, Bob, and his perfect client who is the lady about town. So <laughs> how fun. <laughs> I'll also put a link um, in the notes. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll share that with you, but, um, yes. So my five week RV adventure. Yeah. So, okay. So first of all, um, you said why, because you and your husband have always wanted to do this, right? Where mm -hmm. did you guys go? What did, you know, what happened? I feel, I feel like there was a lot of like adventures. <laughs> there was a lot of, we learned so much. <laughs> okay. So we like set off on this trip and the idea of it is that we are going to travel. We live in Atlanta, Georgia first. Okay. So August is like the most miserable time ever to be in Georgia. Um, and we are not originally from here. I'm, you know, a California girl born and raised and he has adopted California as his home state. So we knew we wanted to travel across to get to where it is no longer miserable. And then we were going to um, travel up the coast and we were gonna meet with my parents who live in Sacramento. And then we were gonna to travel together for five days and then stay in Oregon together for a while. And then we were gonna go up to Seattle and then we were gonna travel back down through the Grand Tetons and eventually make it home. Such uh, a lovely plan. Such a lovely plan. <laughs> The reality of it was um, we made the decision that we wanted to put solar into our brand new travel trailer, which is a great travel trailer, by the way, if anyone's looking. The Rockwood Mini Light 2104S is what we went for. And it, so we put four solar panels on the top and totally like we got these lithium batteries. We tricked this puppy out because we both knew that there were going to be days where we would both need to be working and we would need to have power. And we didn't want to have to run a generator all the time because we were going to be in these beautiful remote locations. So we hired a company. Hey, this is why you need social media because when you Google someone and you read reviews, you should trust those reviews, okay? <laughs> We hired this company because they were only people who we could find in Georgia to do solar because it's just not a thing that people do here. And it didn't work. So we're across the country and the solar is not working. And also because of bad luck, we ended up with a generator that was a lemon. So we had literally no power. Okay. We were, you know, nights with in 80% humidity with no air conditioning. We got stuck in Arizona. We almost killed the cat because by the way, we brought the cat and both dogs. <laughs> We almost killed the cat because their AC wouldn't work. And I go back there and he's just like panting and freaking out. And we're in Arizona. It was 106 degrees. Ugh. So we had to scrap most of the trip. We went straight to my parents because they were able to get us in with their RV people. Uh, and so $3,000 later, they let us know that the solar hadn't been um, 
connected properly and there were fire danger and it was it was like a mess we spent two weeks at my parents house oh my gosh. when you were supposed to be like on this beautiful glorious track <laughs> no i love i love my parents i do i love my parents they're delightful you know we had we ended up in this lovely rhythm that was like you know, I would get up and walk the dogs and then we would all go do work for the day. Well, they're retired, but you know, we would work and then five o'clock we would meet up for cocktail hour by the pool and we would just like have a cocktail and talk for a couple hours and we would do dinner and play games and go to bed. Like, great. Not the trip we were thinking we were going to have. <laughs> it was the trip we got. Um, so we were able to sal salvage uh, some of the back portion. Um, we spent three days at the base of Crater Lake in Oregon. Middle, no one for miles, no one for miles. And I ended up having an internet there, which was great. So I was able to work from there for a couple days. Crater Lake is awesome. My husband does these huge nature prints. So he got this fantastic sunset of you know crater lake and the lake just turns purple and the it it was awesome and then we went up to um we went further up into oregon met up with some friends uh and then went out all social distancing by the way i even made my parents wear masks in their own home when we were there while we you know before we knew everyone was safe yeah. um but yeah then we went where else did we go we went to the grand tetons mm -hmm. we were there for a couple days at the end so when it started to work, it felt good, but there was definitely a huge portion in the center when the cat wasn't traveling well and covered in poop. Oh, and I got food poisoning because the air conditioner, you know, the, the batteries weren't working. So the fridge didn't work one day. And then I was drinking uh, cream in my coffee and I just like <laughs> threw up everywhere. Oh, it was oh, not ideal. Oh, <laughs> no. no. I hope that that was part of some of your social media stories. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like uh, I think I have some kind of one woman show happening right now. Like it was so bad, and we knew we were going to hit challenges because everyone who tries to RV is like, "Look, things are going to go wrong, so just go slow and take your time and be prepared that things are going to go wrong." But everyone we know who does RVing, who does the lifestyle, everyone was like. We haven't heard of anyone have all of those things go wrong at once. Like it was such a shit show. <laughs> I, I mean, the cat had shit on. <laughs> yes, yes, it was a literal shit show. <laughs> so, oh my god! But you know, we're back. We're alive. Uh, well on the last, the day before the last day, one of the solar panels flew off because again, we hired people we shouldn't have to do the panels. Uh, so we, we limped home, but we're home, we're safe. Our RV, who we've called Mrs. Potts because she looks like a teapot. Um, she has a little Band-Aid on her right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna be fine. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, what an adventure though. And thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. <laughs> it, it, I would love to be like, oh, it's so magical. And you know, we woke up and there were birds tweeting and it was like a little bit of that, but it was a lot of, um, and here's the great thing. My husband and I are still talking to each other. <laughs> so. that's, that's a big win right there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, I feel like we learned how to communicate so much better. We've been married almost five years, but this trip, like, wow, can we communicate now? So now you can go on like amazing race together. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm always like, who are these couples who go on this show? They, you know, they're going to get into fights. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you, you can't help it, but you know, like this is the person you love the most in the world, but also like they drive you insane sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like when you were a little kid and your best friend stayed over for three nights and then you wanted to kill each other, you know, like it's the same thing, except for when you're married, they never go away. 
<laughs> Benjamin Franklin used to have a quote that said, um, guests are like fish after three days. They stink. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's why I don't allow my in-laws to stay more than two nights in a row. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> it, it builds better family relationships. It really does. <laughs> well, thanks again, Lauren. Oh my gosh, you're so welcome. This has been delightful. This is so fun. And um, we will, yeah, like put up all of the information so everyone can start to social happy. In yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, please do. Because here's, here's my true mission. My true mission is to take over social media with the people who need to be sharing their message on social media. And the drivel and the silliness will go away and we can use it as a force for good because it is free and you should be utilizing it for you and your business. So good. Thank Plan. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.